Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be summing an infinite series. We have 2 plus 3 over 2 multiplied by x plus 4 over 3 multiplied by x squared, so on and so forth. Where the coefficients are numbers like n plus 1 over n, depending on how you choose your n. So the numerator is 1 more than the denominator. And we have powers of x, starting with x to the power 0, whose coefficient is 2, by the way. So, how do we add something like this? There are infinitely many terms. So to be able to solve this problem, we're going to go ahead and take advantage of a couple things. First of which is the sum of a geometric series. I mean, a series is a sum anyway, so I don't know why we say that, but it's basically we're adding an infinite sum. So let's start with the infinite geometric series formula, which is 1 plus x, plus x squared, plus x cubed, and then we're going to add so on and so forth, all the way up to infinity. And this sum actually converges, which means there's a finite answer if x meets certain criteria. What is that criteria? x needs to be between negative 1 and 1. In other words, we can write this as the absolute value of x needs to be less than 1. In other words, it's like a fraction, 1 half, 2 thirds, whatever. So that's the x values. The coefficients don't really matter that much. Actually, they do. But in terms of convergence, I don't think that they matter that much because x is the one uh, that's the variable. So how do we go from this to this? That's going to be the million dollar question today. Okay. So to be able to do that, we can kind of look at these two series. One of them has always a coefficient of 1. So all the coefficients are 1, as you can see here. In the first one, the original one, the coefficients are different every time, but they have a common pattern. For example, 3 over 2 can be written as 1 plus 1 half. 4 over 3 can be written as 1 plus 1 third. The next one is going to be 5 over 4, which can be written as 1 plus 1 fourth. So that's not a coincidence. And of, of course, this can be written as 1 plus 1 over 1 which doesn't really matter. You can write it as 1 plus 1, 2. So we are basically adding 1 to the reciprocal of positive integers. You get the idea? Well, since the 1s are going to come from here, we're basically going to use this because all the coefficients are 1 here. But where do the 1 half and the 1 third and the 1 fourth come from? Let's think about it. For example, if you wanted to add something to this to get the series above, what would you add? You would add 1. And then you would have, add half of x. And then you would add one third of x squared. And then you would add one fourth of x cubed. And so on and so forth, right? But what is that sum equal to? Do you know what it is? No, not really. Probably not. I mean, you can write it uh, using the sigma notation. Like, let's try to give it a um, try. Uh, n equals zero to infinity. So I want my first term to be like, uh, 1 over 1, which is going to be probably 1 over n plus 1, right, for n equals 1. Maybe I could start at n equals 1. That might make more sense. Let's start with n equals 1. So this term is going to be, oops, why doesn't the eraser work? That's weird. Okay, sometimes notability or the pencil, I don't know what it is. n equals 1. So this time it'll be 1 over n. Because for n equals 2, it's 1 half, so on and so forth. And then x to the power, the first one needs to be 0, so we're going to get x to the power n minus 1. So that's kind of like an interesting sum. If we had n times x to the power n minus 1, we would know what to do. Why? Because if you differentiated x to the power n, this is what you would be getting. Okay. Instead of n, we have 1 over n. That tells you something, doesn't it? you need to go the opposite direction, which is integration. So we need to integrate. Great, let's do it. So I'm going to go ahead and integrate this expression right here. Integrate 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. And you know where that comes from, hopefully, dx. And of course, that sum has an answer like this. So we can integrate both sides like that, right? So the problem with integration, though, when you integrate 1, you're going to get x. And then you're going to get x squared over 2, x cubed over 3, 
x to the fourth over four, so on and so forth. The problem is on the right hand side, you have an ln, you can call this u if you want, but at the end, you're gonna get something like this. By the way, I don't need absolute value because I know that x is less than one, so one minus x is gonna be positive anyways, makes sense? But there's a constant, uh-oh, we have an integration constant, Houston, we have a constant, what are we gonna do? Easy, you're gonna substitute. This is the power of math or infinite series or anything in math in general that you can pretty much replace if these two things are equivalent, then we can replace x with anything we want. But of course, x equals zero would be the most meaningful here because that would just get rid of the left-hand side. If you replace x with one, you're gonna run into a huge problem. You know what that is? That's gonna give you one minus one, which is zero, ln zero is negative infinity with the negative sign, it's a positive infinity. Well, if you take the limit, yes, both sides are gonna approach infinity, but that doesn't help. So if you replace x with zero, you're gonna get zero on the left, and on the right, x will be zero, ln one will be zero, negative zero is zero, as you know, you're gonna end up with c, which means c is zero, which means you don't really need it, but we had to check, didn't we? So this is our sum in the infinite case, but again, x is between negative one and one. And now, what can we do with this? Can we just add these two things? I mean, does that, does that work? I mean, we can give it a try. x plus x squared over two, plus x cubed over three, plus x to the fourth over four, dot, dot, dot. And then we have the one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, dot, dot, dot. When you add these two things, you're gonna get one plus two x plus three x squared over two. Hmm, that's interesting. It's not what we want, but that brings us closer to what we want. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add these up. Remember, this is negative ln one minus x, and this is just one over one minus x. When you add them, you're gonna get one plus two x plus three over two x squared. It's better to write it that way. Four over three x cubed plus five over four x to the fourth power, so on and so forth. And this is one over one minus x minus ln one minus x, awesome. We have a sum. This is not exactly what we're looking for, but we're super duper close. You know what we need to do? Subtract one from both sides. That's gonna give us two x plus three over two x squared plus four over three x cubed. Notice that we needed to do that so we could just start with two, but we're not there yet. So basically we're subtracting one from both sides and I can kind of do it like this. Subtract one here and then subtract the ln. Now we can make a common denominator here, but here's what we're gonna do. We want to start with two, so we wanna take out an x that'll give us what we want. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? By manipulating the sum in different ways, like using calculus, using a little bit of algebra, factoring, so on and so forth, we're able to get what we want. And now everything will be divided by x, but let me go ahead and simplify this first. This will give me the following in a simpler form, ones are gonna cancel out, and I'm gonna have x over one minus x, but then we're gonna divide everything by x, and that's the sum we're looking for, awesome. So this sum that we've been looking for is actually equal to or equivalent to, everything must be divided by x, so this is gonna be one over one minus x, and this one is gonna be ln one minus x, all over x, and this brings us to the end of this video. But before we finish, do you think Wolfram Alpha can handle this with the X? With the numbers, sometimes it struggles, but let's give it a try. What do you think? Ta-da, yes, Wolfram Alpha can handle it, but of course, log means ln in the Wolfram Alpha language, Wolfram Alpha-ish, whatever. And this really brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video, until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.